Hello. Sorry, this one just takes a little while to set up. So I'm just getting all set up here. Oh, I can't even spell. <laughs> Let's try that one again. Hello. Hi, Kim. Oh, Kim, I'm so glad you're here. I was so worried that maybe you weren't feeling good. My husband has this stuff now. Um, I have to tell you, I'm having so much fun with this. I cannot wait to show you the Craftology box because it's an album in a box. So you get a little sneak peek there. That's all you get <laughs> with the Craftology box. Um, hi, Heather. Um, yes, I want to show you the size difference. And also, this is the brand new Authentique cardstock um valentine and that is the christmas box and the tutorials on youtube and this is our little valentine box so you can see the size difference he's just a little guy isn't it cute hi rj how are you um so this is our baby box now i you can make the smaller the reason I did the tutorials because I have a lot of you that have asked for it to be smaller and um, I'm going to make it smaller and I know a lot of you just don't like to do the measurements so and I do it's kind of crazy how we do the measurements it's like an all-day process oh is there no sound uh oh can you guys hear me if you don't have sound it could be your computer So I'm not going to go forward and tell anybody tells me they can, so you guys can tell me you can hear me, because I'm worried you can't. Okay, if if you can't hear me, then turn up your um, turn up your computer. Check your speakers. So the inside is different, also. So I'm going to show you that. This lace, we do have it back in stock. And also the bur the pearls are back in stock. I got to get those on the website. And so let me remove the lid. We're going to create the lid just like we did the big one, but of course the smaller size. And there's the inside. And then we have the bottom. You know, that's also really cute. You can make these just for a gift to go with it, a tray for jewelry. But what I did on this one is I did four little water. I did the four waterfalls and it's shorter. So it's only six and a half inches and I'm not going to, I didn't use any closure with them. Kim, I knew that you and Sally would be proud <laughs> with the lace and the pearls. So we've got four waterfalls and I'm not, I did not do the back because this is my sample paper of the Valentine from Authentique and it also, um, I didn't have all of it. This was like I said, my sample. So what I did is I didn't do the backs, which is okay because you can use that for photos. So there's going to be four waterfalls in this one. And the nice thing too, is if you want it, um, you could just do like picture frames here. And really cut down the cost of this as a gift or if you're going to do them for craft fairs. So you could do a wedding one like bride and groom and then the bride's parents and the groom's parents and just have the photos on there. Wouldn't that be cute? I think that'd be really cute. So I'm just going to put this back in the lid. Push There we go. Push that out. And we're going to get started. Now, I decided I'm going to use a different, <laughs> I decided on a different paper and I'll show you for this one. So I have created the bottom to cut down on time. So I'm not going to create the bottom since the bottom of the lid is the same. And um, I thought I'll get this done because you guys have made a couple of these. But I'm using the Warm and Cozy by Echo Park because I'm making this one for my neighbors. And I want to show you something with the papers. Or is it my favorite winter? Hold on. Oh, I've got some mix up here. 
so on the My Favorite Winter, I don't know if you can tell that, the colors match with My Favorite Winter and warm and cozy. It's so crazy. They had so many this year. Winter ones. So warm and cozy. You can see My Favorite Winter. Everything just kind of goes. So I, I did kind of put it all together except for the pattern papers. So this is the warm and cozy, and I liked it because they're a family um, down the street, and they have mostly boys, and they play outside in the winter. They're teenage boys, so I thought, how cute. Um, I just, I did post all the measurements on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. I posted um, all the measurements here in the description of this video. So if you just scroll down to the description, you're going to find all of the cutting guide, and I'll give it to you as I go. So, I've already cut my papers, like I said, to save time. So, let me show you what I did. And I only used one sheet of each design. And I'll finish this off. So, this was the banner paper, and I'm putting three of them together. So, those two will be there. My third waterfall, so it's going to... It'll read across when you open. You are never too old for a snowball fight with. It kind of cut off friends, but that's okay. And then, of course, there wasn't enough because you're cutting. These are four inches, so four, eight, twelve. So what I did is I used the back of the one scrap, and it's going to go down here on the end. I thought that'd be really cute. What the heck's wrong with my placement here? There we go. So. When you open it, you'll have have this going around. And of course, I have to grab something from Wilbur. Give me that. You can't have you little turd. When did you pick this up? Well, there went that piece of paper. Within seconds, Wilbur had this in his mouth. Ah. <sighs> Lordy be that boy. So we have, I have three waterfalls done. So that we're not going to do all four on camera. That would be a nightmare. So if you're looking at the cutting guide, and it's right here in the description, and it's on scrapbookers. We need a piece of cardstock. We need a couple of pieces, right? Let's start here. So you need two, one piece of cardstock that's eight and a half by eleven. This is our box. So if you watched how to make the big one, you'll see how we put this together. So eight and a half by eleven is your first piece, and then eight and a half by ten is our second piece. And for the lids, so you want two. This is going to be for the top. They are nine and five eighths by nine and five eighths, and that's what's going to create this. And I love this paper because it's so outdoorsy, and yet I can use it because I have, you know, I have three boys and my daughter, and I've got some really cute sledding pictures. And we have lots of grandsons, so this is going to be cute for the guys. Now, if you're looking at your cutting guide, or if you already did your cutting on, from scrapbookers, your waterfalls are going to be made on this base. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Froggy. <laughs> are going to be made on this base. And they are four inches by six inches. See, it's not very big at all. So four by six. And you want four total. Now, again, you can do anything you want on these um, sections once you get it built. Then your waterfalls, you do need 16, but I'm only using four because I've made mine. They're, these are four by five. And the one thing you want to do is make sure they're all the same width. Yes, we do love Wilbur, that is for sure. <laughs> you want to make sure they're the same width. If not, you can trim it now. Okay, lightweight chipboard. That's what turns this into a box without having to use any construction strips or anything in it. 
and your box is perfectly square. That's what I love about this. It's so, it's like, it's so sturdy, but yet um, you don't have to wrap. You don't have to do any of those construction strips, which it doesn't matter. Mine's still crooked. And you want four pieces that are four and a half by six and a half. We are going to trim these down, but I'd like to wait till we get our sections made. And I do sell the lightweight chipboard at countrycraftcreations.com. And it's wonderful. Okay, now our pieces that are going to go inside of our box. You need one that's four and a half by four and a half. Because it's going to go in the bottom. And I've cut my strips, but we're maybe wait a minute. Maybe I lost my strips. No, I need to cut my strips. Your strips are actually one and an eighth inches long to sit inside. They're going to be one and an eighth by four and a half. So I just need to cut three more of those. I don't know why I didn't. Whoops. Get back in the camera. And again, you can use a heavy chipboard. I don't, um, like I say in the video for the big one, I am not sure how, to be honest with you, how it will work with um, the folding over of your cardstock if it would be too thick. But if you try it, let me know. So one and one eighth. And that's my crap blade, so I don't have to ruin my good one. And we're going to cut it at four and a half. And we want four of those. Jennifer, hello. Guess what's sitting on my desk, Jennifer? Uh huh, the Cricut Maker. <laughs> After, oh, I've got ink on. After um, spending time with you this weekend, um, I did realize I needed. The, the heavier duty one, so I went and got it. So I need one more, one and an eight. And four and a half. Now I'm gonna just leave um, that crappy blade in there. But let's cut one more. Yes, I went and got it because um, it does do so much more. So now I have them both. The chipboard that we use to put the ribbon on, it's four by four. This is just extra, just like I made with the big one, so that um, it's popped up on foam dots, so that you don't have to worry about the ribbon tearing up your um, paper. Yes, you know what? It's pretty easy, but yeah, you'll have to teach us. In fact, we'll get you together down here and have a, we'll have a Cricut class. Okay. Again, all these measurements are in the box below, but you want a four by four, four and a half by four and a half. Four pieces. Actually, you'll want eight top and bottom, but today we only need four because I'm just building one and then you can do the other one by rewinding one and one eighth by four and a half. Right now you want four, four and a half by six and a half and we will trim those. Okay, let's get started. Let me get my notes of creating this. So I just use notebooks, so I suggest during tutorials, this is really good to have, or if you have one that's just for tutorials. And I want to show you something else. You know, I'm a stickler for tools that don't cost a lot, but I have to tell you, the Cricut tools were buy one, get one half at Joann's, and I saw this. This is a scoring tool. So I've also ordered them to bring into the shop because I guess they're hard to find. Hi, Patty. It's a scoring tool with a metal tip, okay, and it's kind of rounded. Oh my gosh, this thing is incredible for scoring. 
have been using it and tried it out. So I'm bringing them into countrycraftcreations.com because Cricut is also right here in Utah, ProWorldCraft. So I talked to them. Um, you guys, this is really awesome. So I'll be using it. So that's what my scoring tool is. So I'm going to score the first one, the 10 inch, on the 10 inch side. And we're going to score at one inch and five and one half. Oh, Tanya, I love it. Now let's turn to the eight and a half inch side. And I want you to score it one inch. Now it's up to you. You can score it seven and a half. I like to turn it and score it one inch again. How come you guys didn't tell me about this? I absolutely love this. And it's not going to wear down. Do you know how the points wear down on these guys? Yeah. You guys forgot to tell me about the memo and the secret of this. It's wonderful. Okay, our next piece is the 11 inch piece. And I'm going to put the 11 inch on the top. I'm going to score it one inch. Five and one half. And ten. Yes, I did get the ruler and I love it. So I'm going to score it one on the eight and a half inch side. Um, they've, they've upped their game, let me tell you. These are pretty nice tools. And on the eight and a half inch side, I just turned it around and scored at one. So one inch, five and a half, and I turned it and score at one or ten if you've cut your paper super straight. And one and one or seven and a half, whichever you prefer. Okay, now let's score the lid. <coughs> so the lid is nine and five eighths by nine and five eighths, and it's a it's a square. So we're going to do all four sides the same, so it's perfect. One and one quarter. And two and a half. And just keep turning it one and one quarter and two and a half. One and one quarter and two and a half. One and one quarter and two and a half. That is all the scoring in. And then, you know, you'll do your second lid. This is going to be the bottom. Okay. Um, Sherry, I am shocked at how easy it is. I've been, I've had a silhouette for years, and I've done nothing with, but it, with it but fight and cry and go out and buy a new one, and now I wish I never did. And then um, Jennifer Palmer, scrapping under the, under the influence on our design team, she designs with it. In fact, one of her Halloween projects was designing the haunted house and she used it. So we're going to actually be having a class once we get it set up with her right here at Country Craft Creations. And we'll be letting everybody know about that. If you're local, it's going to be easier. But we had people fly in this weekend, so it was so fun. And um, she's our little expert. And... It's so easy. Basically, you just plug it in and use it. I was shocked. It's really changed from way back when. Okay. I've got all my squares now. For those of you that don't remember or didn't see the box that we made, we're going to take these guys completely out. Okay, those are going to go. We need to miter corners, and I'll go slow so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
You know what, you guys? I feel really dumb. You left me out of the scoring tool and you're all using it. Awesome. So we're going to cut from here all the way up to that second score line. Well, I'm going to angle in. So I like to do it now and get it over with. And I cut to the inside of that score line to get rid of the bulk. Cut the bottom off. Also, I have something to tell you guys. Tonight, for those of you that are in our group, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, and you're um, shipping within the U.S., I have a little prize. I'm going to do a drawing. So you'll need to go back to Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations and comment where I posted the link to our video tonight. Because I'm going to give away one of the 6x8 My Valentine Simple Stories that's going to be in our Craftology box in January. So be sure when the video is done, you go comment about tonight's video. Okay, now we're going to angle this one. An angle right there and I'm going to angle from this end I'm going to, I like to straighten that out Heather yes I am now on the Cricut side <laughs> okay that's what that's going to look like ready hi Susan Let's, let's go in at an angle. Let's go straight up on the inside of that score line and get rid of it. These are the two bottoms. This I'm going to angle. Keep this second one square. I'm going to angle this side on the opposite side. Now, if for some reason you've made a boo-boo and you have a tab here and now a tab sticking out that way, it happens. You're okay. Don't worry. And don't start throwing your paper because you're fine. Okay, let's go to this side. Oh, hi. Well, Mary, I'm glad you're with us. So once again, now we're on the opposite end. And let's go straight up to that second score line. Let's remove these bottom guys right here. Now this square, same thing. So I'm going to talk you through this one. You'll have to do another one, which you can do after the video. And then we're going to angle this side. Let's repeat. Straight up on that second score line. Let's remove the bottom. To our angle cuts. Why are you throwing your big box? Okay, that's what we want it to look like. And the reason we have two here is this is going to reinforce it on the inside and it's also going to cover that chipboard so it really makes it sturdy. Hi, Tricia. Oh, <laughs> yeah, isn't he just Mr. Silly? Okay, I need to get my strips. Oh, I did have, I knew I had those cut. I should have looked for them. So, I chose the leaves for the outside on this paper. And I'm going to do the red on the inside. And my strips are one and one eighth by four and a half. And um, I've already inked the edges with black. Um, Donis, are you using the paper that is foil, um, 
Are you using glitter paper? Because if you are, I show in that big box, you need to scrape off that glitter to make it fit. Okay, so one and an eighth by four and a half. We're going to do some matting beforehand. And then this piece, I've already cut also my inside pieces, so we wouldn't we'd speed up some time here. I think that is so that paper is so cute. But I'll use um, red on the top. And I'll put my bear on the inside. Even though it's on the bottom, so I'll do the top. And then I'll probably put some more of the animals. But it's four and three eighths by four and three eighths. And first we're going to put down our four and a half by four and a half piece of chipboard. It's remember it's lightweight chipboard. And this is so nice because it gives it the chipboard feel because it is chipboard but um, you don't have to wrap it and you're not having to use any construction strips. Hi Kathy! So I'm going to just use my art glitter glue you can use any adhesive or you can use your um, score tape whatever you like to use So this came with my Cricut, <laughs> so I'm going to use it because you know what? I'm really liking it too. It was in with my new Cricut maker, so I got my Christmas present early. And just clean off any glue that sneaks through. Let's go ahead now and put the four and three eighths, or no. This is four and a half by four and a half, and it is down in the cutting guide. Um, it's the same size as the chipboard. Sorry, I shouldn't have told you four and three eighths. It's the same size. You know, I wouldn't have gone out and bought it. It's just that I got the maker. Yes, actually, you don't want to hear it, but I got the maker. No, first I went and bought the air. <laughs> then I was told, oh, but the maker can do so much more. I should have done more research. I do paper. I cut. You know, I don't really re go through the machines. So now I have both. My husband doesn't know it yet. But I just told him I don't want anything for Christmas. Oh, why? And I said, well, because. <laughs> I don't think I'll tell him why. Okay, we're going to turn this over. I'm going to go ahead and map this side too. Now. Yes, it's four and a half by four and a half. But I was shocked at how quick and easy it was just to plug in and use. The old Cricut expression was not like this. So I'm happy. Yeah, it kind of was Jan on our design team's fault. <laughs> but she knows so much. I cannot wait to share her knowledge of the Cricut with everybody because she really knows the Cricut, let me tell you. That's the pen to mine. Okay, one and an eighth by four and a half. We can go ahead and mat these now, which is a lot easy, easier. But if you are using a paper that has a directional, um, the Valentine one is directional. So you want to make sure at the bottom, because you're going to fold up, the top folds down. So, isn't that cute, the little birds? So you do have to watch your directional. Debbie, you need the maker. I'm telling you, and it's it's pretty an awesome machine after I got it home. Okay, I've been cutting chipboard with it. Heavy chipboard. Okay, we're just gonna go around the square. So 
So if you wanted a more like outdoorsy Christmas, um, this is a great one, not just for winter, but also for, I would use this for Christmas. Actually, this is going to my neighbors for Christmas, so. They can um, use it for Christmas or their outdoor activities. Thank you for the thumbs up. So for those of you on Facebook, um, don't forget to go back and comment on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. That's our private group on Scrapbook bookers and that way you'll get put in the drawing tonight um, I'll do the drawing I'll give you guys 30 minutes to go back to the group and put your name in comment under the where I've linked this video and we'll send you out like a little a little Christmas prize <laughs> okay hi Tina now the back side inside so these are going to fold in if you've never made a box this way but we're going to add chipboard and those are those one and a half or one and one eight by four and a half in strips. And then we are going to cover it right there with our but the cardstock folds over, hides it, and it looks great. So we have four of these to put down. Well, I have this little chart. <laughs> Margaret that I can show you. It cuts like 300 different um, stuff whereas the air only cuts 100 different and it cuts a lot harder. It'll do heavy chipboard, balsam wood. Um, it has a rotary cutter. It has a scorer. I've been playing with all of it using the chipboard. I've been cutting tags. I love it. Just love it so far. So easy to play with and use. Oh, you're here for the lid? <laughs> yeah, the company's super nice too. I love crafting with everybody. Then my family doesn't think I'm just down in my studio talking to Wilbur. Of course, usually I am. And like I said, I haven't used heavy, but this lightweight chipboard I sell at Country Craft Creations, it comes directly from Authentic, so um, they carry it for me. You know, it's fabulous stuff. And it's, it's pretty heavy, but it um, it's going to make the box so cool. So you'll notice, I don't know if you use a thicker chipboard, what it's going to do. So now we're going to, we're going to burnish it right over the top. And if you're using the artisan cardstock, you don't have to worry. But if you're using a different cardstock, test it to make sure it's not going to crack. Because my cardstock, it won't crack. Crack, it won't. It won't crack doing this. So, you want your lid to be super square. Always do the burnishing. I guess it's from being in the military, in a military family. You gotta iron those creases, right? If you want them to be super, super tight. Okay. We're going to do our ends first. And what I'm going to use is my clothespins. Oh, is Sandy barking? <laughs> okay, let's cover that whole end with the glue. Hi, Annette. How are you doing? Now, remember, you can slide this up and down for a brief moment if you're using our glitter glue and you want it to be perfectly straight. Just fold that over and let's clothespin it for a moment. You can see what I'm doing. 
same thing. So I like to do these two sides first, so then those are free. But let's take the time to get it straight. Okay, once you're there, just close pin it down. I fold it right over. I have to wait just a moment. And let's repeat. Um, you know, there's there's nothing I don't like a flimsy box. That's why the chipboard is so nice, and it's so much faster. Hi, Connie. Yeah, I love the lightweight too. It doesn't feel lightweight. Let me tell you, it is not. It's not flimsy at all. It's not. It's not flimsy. That's all I can say. And that's how the top and the bottom are done. And I'm just going to burnish those edges I and mean those um, tabs. May have to hold it for just a second. As you know, our glitter glue dries fast. Now we're going to fold those in and glue. And I'm just going to push it right down there to the edge in between where that chipboard has left a little groove. If you need to, you can trim it off if it's too long for your, your box. Uh-oh. Heather, the dog, and the kid are in trouble? <laughs> Usually, it's just Wilbur here that's in trouble. I'll let that sit for just a second and get tag tacky. There we go. Okay, hey, now we have to do is map the inside. Just need to touch up with the black. Okay, those will go right on top of those two our flap and our chipboard. Oh, thank you. Yes. If you're on Facebook too, our commer and you, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram. Um, what we did a YouTube, I mean, we did a commercial, me and the dogs for, um, true, true dog, uh, dog food and supplements. 
And it was so funny. We did it in July. And so when I opened Facebook last night and there was my commercial and my big fat face is right there on Facebook. It was like, oh my God, <laughs> my commercial's up. So I had a lot of people ask me, when is your commercial going to be on that you shot? And I was beginning to think they're not going to put it on. They're not going to, they had to do the editing. So they shot it in July. We had a whole camera crew here and they did Wilbur and the dogs. And I didn't even realize how much footage was on there. Um, it was quite an experience. So yes, my commercial is on Facebook and Instagram and True Dogs website. And, and the first thing I did, I told my mom, see my mom's 87. I was like, mom, I cannot wait to show her this weekend. I have to go over with my phone. She doesn't have internet. And you get to see Wilbur's speckled tummy. He was so cute. Yeah. You know, the dogs, especially our Newfie, our Newfoundland mix, she's over 11 years old. And a lot of people can't believe it because she's really healthy. And I really do think it's the supplements of the food. Because she was limping and we were afraid that she was having hip problems. So we got her on it. What a difference. Tell you what, though, I was hot. You could tell in the video. It's hard shooting a commercial. It takes, it took three hours just to get what you saw. <laughs> and I'm sure they cut out a lot of it, but it took, well, maybe it was longer than that. They were in our house for about five hours, actually. Okay, there's my, there's my top. Now for the top, we're going to go ahead and build this part. We're just going to go ahead and wrap it really quick, and then we'll get to the, the main box so we have it done and it's four by four so you want a piece of cardstock that's six by six your black cardstock or oh whatever your color you're using hold on oh that's awesome that your baby's 15 So six by six. You know, Jen, that is so awesome of you to share what your knowledge with the maker with us. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So it's six by six. So I have that inch all the way around. And I'm just using one inch strips of this lightweight chipboard because I cut it really quick. Um, so I have that inch border. It just makes life so much easier. Look at that. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry. So when you're using glue and you're wrapping chipboard, if you don't let it dry, it'll come off. So we're going to set that aside and move on to our boxes. Now you'll notice one piece we did not have the ends because they're going to come together so we didn't need it. And we're going to go ahead and furnish those score lines. So you have an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom. Um, Jen, tell your family it's time to have cereal for dinner. <laughs> now, the reason I leave these together is I'm going to fold this in half. Even though I have a score line, I want to make sure it's perfect. There we go. So I want those to be the exact same size. You can see I'm scoring pretty hard. Well, I guess little Nicholas needs dinner because he's little. Okay. We don't need these corners, these four corners. 
And the reason for this is it's going to give you, let me show you, a nice finished edge. And it's going to wrap that chipboard. And with the nice finish, that nice finished edge, it won't get torn up either. So we're going to angle this. We're just going to cut an angle here. And we're going to angle here. Let's fold that up and clean that edge. Same thing. Same thing. And again, if you need to clean it up. Thank you, Mary. They are fun boxes and they're great gifts. And you can make them quickly. Especially, it well, it depends on what you put into it. If you put all the waterfalls, it's going to take you a little longer. I'm just going to fold that in half. I'm going to angle those, or you can just angle and angle from each side of your score line. And that's what that's going to look like. Okay. We're going to do the same thing to the second piece. We just won't have one of the sides, but we're going to repeat exactly like that on our score lines. I'm going to leave that folded in so I can now make sure we're completely even. Okay, while it's folded, while I have it folded in half, I'll just go ahead and cut those. I am going to angle these, these edges. And we're going to remove our squares. Now, if you're new, I probably should have show, shown you this. So if you're uncomfortable with doing that, first just remove your square. Okay. Fold your uh, flap over and then just go ahead and angle it. If you're more comfortable cutting the square out first, you get the same you're going to get the same effect. Now I do want to go ahead and measure this. So this is four and a half. And I did cut these at a full four and a half inches, but I know it's going to be too big. Whoops. And you want four of them. So when you set it in, see you're going to see it's going to go over that score line. But you, you want it to fit kind of close. You don't want to you don't want to completely take off um, a full eighth of an inch. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to put this here in my groove and take off a little tiny bit. And let's see how it fits because you want that to fold over, and you're going to have two of them. So if you need to take it off just a hair more, now I'm probably at a full eighth of an inch. I'm going to say you'd be safe, but do check. Hello, Sally. Now the same with the length. Again, it's over my score line. So I'm going to say now that I have all my score lines finished and I know everything's pretty well even, you are safe to go ahead and cut this at four and three eighths by six and three eighths. But I really do like to try and do the scoring first. Make sure I didn't score it funky or something. Okay, so now I know I can take an eighth off. 
the top and the bottom because I don't want to waste also any of my chipboard. And you need four. So four, four and three eighths by six and three eighths. If you're comfortable just cutting it that length, that's okay too. And I'm just going to use my art glitter glue. I think on my bigger one, I did use score tape sheets. So, you want to have about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. second one down again just making sure it's going to fold up okay <laughs> yes and Sally Froggy is um, Santa Claus and she knows the truth that you've been naughty and Sally I did let everybody know not to forget to go back to scrapbookers to be put in for the drawing for the six by eight Simple Stories paper pad for Valentine's Day. Okay, let's let that one dry. Let's do this piece. Um, and then we'll go back and fold our flaps. Again, check everything to see how it fits. Push that all the way over there. We're fine. Um, Froggy, do you see what I put up with her? Denial, denial, denial. Ooh, slow cooker chili sounds really good. It's been really cold and rainy here in Utah. And if you find you don't have room, just trim it down. Um, on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, you should see I posted the link to this live stream. And it's right there in Scrapbookers. Um, it has our, it says Valentine mini album box. And that's where you want to comment, Mary. Comment just about the video. Uh, comment, say, you know, watch the video tonight or... You made the box, anything you want, or just put your name there so that you'll be put in the drawing. And when I'm done and clean up, I'll go pick a winner. No, Sally wants socks, Donna. She needs a sock tree. Okay. We're going to go ahead and wrap this. This tab, if you need to mark it, whatever you need to do, leave it alone. <laughs> That's what we're going to attach this whole box with. This is your like lifeline. Do not mess with that except for I'm going to fold it over and I want to make sure, see how not, that's kind of sticking over. I want to clean up my edges. I want to make sure everything's nice. I'm going to have a nice straight line. If you don't, you can trim it now. Okay. If you need to move that backwards so you don't mess with it, that's fine. Pat, I saw those cookies <laughs> on Facebook, and they looked delicious. So I'm going to add some adhesive right at the top of my chipboard. 
And again, you can use any adhesive you like, but I would still use wet adhesive across there if you're um, wanting, it, wanting it to be really smooth across the top. Yes, you did, Sally. And Wilbur was really distraught from it. Also, you can fold this in half. You should be able to fold it in half. And you can fix that too if you need to. Now Sally needs brown socks. I'm just pushing it right against that chipboard. Okay, see that little tiny piece sticking over? That That is going to cause, um, you're, you're not going to like the way that looks. So I'm going to do the two bottoms before I fold this over. This one we're going to leave alone. Or this one, it doesn't matter, just leave one of those side flaps alone. <laughs> hey Trisha, I guess you used the bad word so it won't let you it won't let it come through. But she did say brown socks. Okay, but you know, because YouTube has cracked down on because they got in trouble, not us. But <laughs> I know what kind of socks you mean. Okay. Now I can put the end down. Again, just make sure everything is in a perfect straight line. Everything should be lined up. Nothing sticking over these edges. And as long as they aren't, then you're in good shape. And you're going to have a nice clean square box. Hi, Gina. Okay. Now, we are going to put... Um, a piece of our scrap block paper there and now you'll see how nice it folds now if you're having any issue just fold it over and burnish it um, if you're using the artisan cardstock you'll be fine if you're not you should be <laughs> okay we're going to do these three sides this is where see, things will come together okay I know, and Wilbur is so sweet and innocent. He has such a little boy. He's scared when um, when Sally makes Pumpy put the fear fear of you know who in him, Uncle Vito. You know, he wouldn't be such a ornery cat if he had gotten his Christmas present last year. All he wanted was a nice outdoor playset from Aunt Sal I mean from his mommy Sally so he could go outside in New York. That's all he wanted. But would she bother to get it for him? Oh no. Uh no, actually Wilbur's digging up his bed to hide a bone. Okay, now let's do this edge, but before I do, again, I have some sticking over the edge of my chipboard. Oh, now... 
do you, Froggy? <laughs> I'll bet you never imagined being called Froggy. <laughs> Okay, um, these two are going to connect, and I am going to trim this up. Do you see how that's kind of sticking over the edge there? So when I put this down, oh, maybe I don't have to. Um, never mind. If you have just about an eighth of an inch, you're just going to make sure it's from the score line. It'll be fine, actually. But I'm going to angle my last flap here in just a hair more. And we're going to add our adhesive. You're going to line your box up. So this will be on the back side, but you won't even see it. So you can't even tell where it is on this one or the other one. So you won't even see it. Oh, that's true, Pamela. We should have known. <laughs> Remember the score line. Let's just burnish that up one last time. You want to keep to the inside here of this score. I mean, the outside here of that score line. Hello, Bonnie. And now. We're going to line it up top to bottom. And flip that over. Now we're going to set that aside because we have that all ready to go while we now do the lid. Okay, it's nice and dry. So now we can go ahead and burnish those edges. Heather, what'd you get kicked off Facebook for this time, dear? Um, if you're using the black, we've talked about this before, I, I still have not moved my, I have a heater down here in my office. I need to move it away from my cardstock, and I have it. So you might get a little dryness on the edges, but just use a file because the cardstock's wood, wood fibers and other stuff. So if you do get a little bit of that fuzzy, just scrape it off. And we're going to cut these corners out. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. I didn't see you in there. Maybe I did see you earlier. I just saw you say hi, Bonnie. I looked up. You can plead the fifth. You and RJ, uh, Mark, are brave to be in here with a bunch of us women. So we love having you guys crafting with us. I feel like everybody crafting with us. <laughs> so now I'm going to fold my flaps over. And I just want to clean up my edges. <clears throat> and I know these are some extra steps, but, you know, the finished project is what you're going for. And it only takes a few extra seconds. Um... And once you get um, used to doing it, you're like, I can't, you won't be able to do your projects without cleaning up all these edges. See, that one sticks over. And it makes a difference on how things fit. Um, <clears throat> VMC Expressions, hello! I haven't seen you in a long time. Okay, we're just going to add our adhesive to the top. How are you doing? Okay, just flip that baby over. Um, 
and I'm going to do the opposite side. You're not going to see this, of course. This is the bottom, and this is where we're going to poke, <clears throat> excuse me, poke, poke that hole for the ribbon, or you can even use a knob. If you have any of the Tim Holtz or Gravity 45 handles, you can use those. So it doesn't have to be a ribbon. It um, doesn't have to, you actually, you don't have to put anything on there if you don't want to. They can open the box just fine. Um, we're doing great. I just haven't seen you in so long. I'm so happy you're here. Okay. It's four by four. So now you're going to want a piece of paper. That's three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Oh, love it. It's going on top of the red. So I think we're going to go with the lots. Again, it's three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Hi, Lorianne. Well, welcome. Um, I do live shows every Thursday. We've had a, I've had a couple where I haven't, of course, and oh, and I will be doing a live tomorrow, and not tomorrow, next week, and then no lives for two weeks till the first of the year. And don't forget, if you're on Scrapbookers of Country Crowd Creations on Facebook, um, we are having a New Year's Eve crop, and it's a special group set up for it, so you have to look up Country Craft Creations New Year's Eve online crop where we do videos. And we get to spend New Year's Eve together, crafting and cropping and doing, um, we do challenges and videos and prizes. So, two inches is our center, right? So we're going to find our two inch. Again, I'm just using my one inch strips and my scoreboard. And I crisscross them where two is. And right in the center is that two inch mark. Whatever you're using, a brad, if you're using ribbon, you're going to need to punch a hole. And if you have the crop -a dial it works great. If you don't have the crop -a dial you can use like a pokey tool to make your hole. Or you can just leave this and then decorate it. So I'm going to put it right in my crop -a dial and I'm using the biggest um, hole. And the nice thing is there's a ruler down here so that I can make sure I'm at the two inch mark at least one direction, but my pencil mark helps. And then decide what you want to use. If you know me, I'm stuck on this and I am going to use it. I think it'll be fine with this. And I've just cut, well, about a 16 inch piece, but it's, it is too long. You can use, oh my gosh, anything you want, actually. This is mostly for decoration or to pull your box open. Um, the one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I do the uh, foam dots, but I'm not going to do the decorating on this box like I've done on the other two, because I really don't know what I want to do with it. Because it's definitely not, um, it's not going to need flowers. I think I've got some Tim Holtz deer and things like that I want to use. So I want to make sure this is pretty well straight. The whole idea is it's so they can use it to lift the box open. Now we, I have this ribbon. This is the one inch. It's on. It's on the website, countrycraftcreations.com, and we have it by the yard. It's really nice. So on the back, I'm going to tie it in a knot, and this is the reason I did the double dots, um, popping them up twice, is because of this knot. Okay. Yeah, 
nice and firm. Cut your ends off as close as you can. I need more of the black ones. They hide better. There we go. I do too. Black and white plaid is my favorite and it's all over my house. <laughs> so what I did is I filled up around this knot so that it has clearance. So if you do foam tape um, and you've got a knot like that, you could tape that down definitely. But this also gives it some dimension so it looks cool on the box. And I like these black ones because they hide. Good night, Deb. That is early. So I'm just going to go now in the corners. Anywhere you think. This is probably one of the only projects I use this many dots. those are double though we have to double these oh, these these ones are really sticky well the nice thing is tomorrow's Friday <laughs> but time is flying And if you're looking for more, we have lots of videos also on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations on Facebook. And the design team posts all their um, videos when they're ready there. So um, we have a lot going on in that group. If you haven't joined or if you are on Facebook and you're looking for a great crafting group, come join us. There's so much in there to do. Okay, now this will sit right on top there. I use glue. It becomes permanent that way. See, now we have room. And now you have some dimension. And that looks really cool. That definitely is for an outdoor family. Love it. Okay, my lid and my, my top and bottom are done. The only difference is we put this on. You can put, you can put this on there if you want. No ribbon. And it actually would look like a set, you know, it'd pop it up. I have done that on other projects where I've done dimensions like this. They kind of act like the feet. Leave your ribbon off. If you do want to add it to the bottom, it'll pop it up a little bit off the table. So those are done. Now let's do this. When you were cutting your cardstock, you should have had some leftovers. You may have had some leftovers because we need to cover here. You could go straight across with one piece if you want. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to cut three pieces. And they're going to be, looks like four and a half. I'm just going to use these. And our box is six and a half. So I do need to cut these three pieces down. I need to cut that too. Since I'm going to cut it, I'm going to go ahead and cut them down to four inches even by six and three eighths. Okay, I don't like to use glue. When I have moving parts like this, I don't want to use glue. So I'm going to use my score tape sheets. I need to check if I cut this short enough. I did not. Okay. 
So I'm going to use my big sheets, my 8.5 by 11 inch sheets. So everything I'm using also, I sell at countrycraftcreations.com. And the score tape sheets just make life so much easier. And then with my blade. Now remember when you're cutting, just push your cardstock. Now my hand is going to push it against, I can feel it pushing against my blade. So it's tight so that I know it's going to be straight. Or I always hope it's going to be straight. I'm just going to add this right here. Again, just push that cardstock against the, the tape. And we'll save that for something else. I'm not worried about the sides. put down. Also going to make your box stronger once you get the cardstock there. Okay, now anywhere it is sticking up, it's just normal score tape the sheets are, so just kind of push it in. Sides won't matter because we're going to cover them with our cardstock. And it's really sticky. Hi, Carrie. our last one. Now whatever you like to use just so that it won't puncture your paper. Um, these are score tape sheets Kim. I sell them at countrycraftcreations.com and I'll tell you what um, if you watch my tutorials I use them in building the albums. Very seldom I don't even use score tape rolls anymore, so I don't even have, I, I just don't because I don't need to. I use the glue in this. And these are sold by the sheet at countrycraftcreations.com. Well, hi, Charlene. Okay, if you guys are new, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified when I go live on Thursdays. And I have tons of videos. So does our design team. We have 13 designers. Okay, we're going to use our finger and kind of 
help that. But then we're going to use our uh, cheap little Fiskars bone, bone folder or whatever you like. Now, see, it's pretty stiff. You can't, don't force it. We're going to do the center. So right there I used one, not even a full sheet of score tape. The score tape sheet uh, versus probably, because I don't just go around the edges with my score tape. Um, I probably would have used a quarter of a roll. So just check out countrycraftcreations.com. And, oh yes, we have 13 designers that will teach you how to do all this fun stuff. Okay, now there's my box. Isn't that cool? We're going to turn this into an album. Now, the bottom. So when you're putting it in, one thing, and I know a lot of you don't have the bottom made. Um, whoops. So the split where it opens, you know, you'll decide where it's going to go. Mine, because there's my seam, and it's just a psychological thing. I don't want it in the front. And then my opening will be here in the back. Now your lid's going to be probably a little bit tight, but you want it tight. And then that's, oh, and before you put your lid on, for it's, so just push that back out. So just try it, make sure everything fits. Okay, we'll move on. Isn't that a cute little box? Inside, remember, this one was the Valentine's. So this one is different. And if you're just joining us, we made the huge box, my Christmas one. It's already up there. It's a tutorial. But I had so many requests for the little guy. Um, so we've got, this is the co coordinating colors that go with, <clears throat> with the Christmas paper, not Christmas paper, the warm and cozy. You'll have the three different colors. So I'm going to be using that because I love the wood grain. And you want four for the inside and four for your cover, basically. So the more decorative ones, these are going to be the cover. And that was what I used on the waterfall. Do you remember that word that we're using on the waterfall? And this was the bottom half, no, top half. All I need is hot cocoa and fun. So I'll put that on the front cover. That was pretty cute too. It's just an adorable paper. And these were hand drawn by the artist at Echo Park. So, and then the snowflakes and the, or the plaid, you can use either one. So inside I have the snowflakes and then the wood grain or the dark blue you can choose. Now again, check your size. You may have to trim these down, but you want, I'm going to go four and three eighths by six and three eighths. So I do need to trim just the sides. Um, these are quick. Actually, Donna's yesterday, in about five hours, I made this one, and I cut all this for tonight's show. So these are quick. Like I said, it depends on what you're going to put on the inside. You don't have to do the waterfalls or the pages. Where's my, there's my good blade. You don't have to do all of that. Um, it can just be for picture frame, one picture on each for a family member. So I'm cutting these down to four and three eighths by taking an eighth of an inch off the sides. So you can get two of these, especially if you go to crops and take your own project. Get two of these made at, at one day and then you've got two gifts. You're good to go. Now let's check everything our length. So four and three eighths by six and three eighths. See, I cut mine four and a half by six and a half with the tutorial because I didn't want to cut them too short. And I didn't want to have to cut them all from scratch because then you'd have to sit here and watch me decide what I was going to use. <laughs> okay. I am. Oh, thank you. 
that makes me feel really that makes me smile as I spit. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you for saying that. You you made my night. Here, most of them that already know me, they just come here in hopes to hearing Wil Wilbur, my beagle. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yes, I'm, we're going to do the waterfall right after this. I have made the three waterfalls. And if you just showed up, I will show you those again in just a moment. But um, oh, one thing when I use black, I I always ink the back side. Well, for that reason, but we're going to cover it. So I don't get ink everywhere if it's a light color. Yes, we're going to make the one waterfall. And if you are new to my channel, you're going to notice I use my scoreboard for everything. I also sell those because they are the only true mat that is self-healing, I believe. Um, I cut everything with this. And um, then they also help me see I can keep things really straight. So now that I've cut these down and we're all inked, we can go ahead and mat. And I... Like I said, you can um, you can definitely do this if you're going to do it for a wedding. What a cute gift! And then just just have it um, as picture frames. So it's quick. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows Wilbur, and you know he, he was kind of he was an accident. I wasn't supposed to have a dog with a personality. I didn't want one. We were, you know, gosh, I have grandkids. I wanted a nice, quiet little beagle, which my husband laughed, to keep me company while I was crafting. And he was. He was the quietest of the litter, the fattest little guy. And then he turned into Ahmed the terrorist. Two weeks after we got him home, it was like... He gave us a run. He still gives me a run for my money. But I wouldn't trade him. That's for sure. I love him. So I'm just alternating my pieces. <laughs> Pamela, has your uh, beagles calmed down as they've gotten older? Because I really hope he doesn't. I mean, he has his quiet moments when he's sleeping. <gasps> Diane, how could you say that? <laughs> I don't spoil him. He, he's not spoiled. Do you guys think Wilbur spoiled? Of course, my husband does. See? He's not spoiled. Oh, yeah, Linda's got a couple of dogs. Hers are spoiled. Okay. And with this little box, you do want to do the outside. <gasps> Tanya, how could you say that? <laughs> oh, you guys, I don't know. Oh, that's pretty cute. Okay. That's one thing to figure out because I do have wording here and we have to, did I not, I have to cut those down. Sorry. So let's just quickly do that. Yes, I know he is spoiled. <laughs> Margaret, you know better because you have dogs yourself. <laughs> and they're pretty cute. Uh, yours are really nice dogs. <gasps> Hi, Diane. How are you? So we're just going to cut these all down eight of an inch so that they're four and three eighths by six and three eighths. Oops. 
Heather, I think you got Daisy the same time I got Wilbur, huh? Um, Raven. No, this is the little one. Okay, the Valentine. I mean, the the Christmas one is on my YouTube tutorial. This is the Valentine one. See how much smaller? It's it's our it's the little sister. This one's big. And so I'm doing this one live because I knew I would not be able to do a tutorial, and I've had like. Um, I had four email, four different emails for different sizes, so I thought let's just do it. So you'll have it for Christmas, and I'll later on do the. Somebody wanted a little one that's only three by five. How cute is that? So we'll get that one done later. And I know that my wording, I cut off the H, so you know. I think we're going to go ahead and go with the winter scene. Um, except for I still am going to alternate. But that's okay. Because I'll make it work. Yeah, this one, my neighbor, it's really funny. One family, of course some of the girls are married now when we moved here. We've been in this area for 15 years. They have seven girls, and the other family has seven boys. We always teased them that they were doing that. They did it on purpose, but they didn't. And they're not getting married, so. <laughs> but um, the one with boys, they're just really nice people. And I usually give them something every year. No, this is the smaller box. The bigger box is on my YouTube it should be the first recorded video that comes up. And it's much bigger. It's like eight by, gosh, I don't know offhand, guys. Sorry. But it is much bigger. Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, seven. Yeah, it was really funny. And now the one family with all girls, I don't know if any of the boys are married. There's only a couple, maybe two of the girls old enough to be married. But the one girl's had two girls. And that poor, you know, I'm like, you guys aren't ever going to get a boy in that family for nothing. So mom had seven girls and now there's two granddaughters. That poor dad. Oh, that's my favorite movie too, Pamela. I love the play. I love it. Yeah, I love that winter side. Okay, and next is the waterfall. And like I mentioned, I won't do any of the decorating because I have no idea what I'm going to do. It'll probably be, because there's definitely not even going to be any lace and flowers. Probably buttons on top and, of course, a cut apart. And you can see how I decorate the Christmas one on the other video. Okay. So now when it comes together, that's my front. Let's do the waterfall. And if you're just joining us, I already show that I've done some of the waterfalls and what I did is I'm using that cut apart sheet so it'll go like this you're never too old for a snowball fight with friends and this one will be on the end so three are made and let's make one you need the base again four by six and then you need four four by five pieces for your waterfall. And again, just make sure they're the same width as your uh, base, because we're going to build it on the base. We're going to score all four pieces on the five inch side. So with the five inch side at the top, we're just going to score half inch. Okay. 
Now, you'll have 16 of these to do <laughs> if you make the whole thing. If you want waterfalls, maybe you don't want waterfalls in the whole thing. So make two waterfalls and leave two blank just for photos. Or um, you can, oh my gosh, you can just do so much with this little box. And we're going to burnish those edges. Now with my base, this is where I use my scoreboard. I build mine upside down. It's easier. I know I've seen some crafters that make them this way and build up. So whatever you're comfortable with. I do mine upside down. I can see it better, I feel like. So the half inch that I fold over is right here closest to me. Now I've used my scoreboard. And my second one. So where this one ends is where my next one will start. Bring them down to make sure it's straight. You can even washi tape a piece here to there to hold it on if you want. <laughs> so all together you'll have 16 waterfalls so this little box would hold 32 pictures or depending on what else you decide to to put on the pages you can put pockets on these um oh my goodness you can do so much with just use your imagination And number four. Now, if you get to the bottom and you find it's not perfectly straight, just trim that bottom off. Just like that, your waterfall is together and it's straight. Like I said, I didn't use any closures on this. I just let it kind of hang in the box and it, it does well. So, now I'm going to get my matting. The mats are all four or three and seven eighths by four and three eighths. So, you want three and seven eighths wide, four and three eighths long. And I did already um, I inked all mine so they're all ready to go and if you're going to do the inside it's going to be the same size three and seven eighths by four and three eighths And if you're using glue, do spread it around because that's going to make a difference in this laying flat. Now, for the spines across here, I even cut these. Yes, you can put cookies in your gift box. That's right. You can just stick them downside in the center with in a plastic bag when you give it for a gift or candy. Popcorn, oh my gosh, anything. These are three eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths. And they're just from my scraps, but I did red on all of them. We'll just add them now as we go. Kind of gives it a finished look. Um, 
Um, I think that is so that is so cool. See, this box came about from a huge box that we made. It was 12 inches tall. It was big. And Heather put a full, uh, what, a 50 by 60 fuzzy blanket. She rolled it up and put it in the box. And that one is over on the Authentic Paper Facebook page. So it's a large gift box. And then as I was making that box for a tutorial, all of a sudden I just it just hit me. Oh my gosh, we have to turn this into an album. And I stayed up, but my husband kept coming downstairs to say, Are you come to bed? I'm like, no, I have to make a box. He thinks I'm crazy, but this is what happened. We made boxes and then we had to make it smaller. <laughs> I love it when there's so much you can do with one idea and turn it into so many different um, ideas. And then it's kind of a stress-free because you're not having to do, I don't know about you, but you get me with construction strips and um, chipboard and it's not going to be straight. Don't ask me why. But, and that's when what brought me to build boxes like this. Um, a couple of years ago on Authentique, I was making the desk organizers using lightweight chipboard to strengthen it. Because you want to make, when you put this much work into a project, you don't want it to be flimsy. And you want it to, to come across as being, you know, a wow. You want that wow factor. Okay. And adding this chipboard now has turned this into a wow factor. So, my first waterfall. Now, if you are going to put ties on it... So on the bigger one, if you haven't seen this bigger one, I use the bigger ribbon. Of course, these are much larger waterfalls. You can see the size difference here. So I did put a tie closure, and then we have some side pages and pockets. So this is the tutorial that's on my page. But you definitely can use do ties. But if you're going to, then you need to add them now. See how cute that looks inside there. So do add those now across the back if you want ties. Now I didn't, I didn't. They just, they just lay nice. No problems. Now we're going to glue these down. And because I need to make sure mine are in order. Oh, now you can also turn this into a pocket. So if you just want to glue three sides, bring it to the bottom. Then you can stick a tag in there. Like one, of, well, just make them. Make it to fit or use a graphic 45, whichever you like. Okay. And I'm just going to center mine. Keep your fingers back there till you're ready to put it down. No, never too old. Okay. 
one thing I am going to do. So I'm going to go back like those little windows and we'll use glossy accents and dress it up on all of these. So that they look like the lights are on. Just in the little cabins. But that's something you want to do very last and let it dry overnight. So I just want to get right there where it's attached. Now our snowball fight with a friend. Isn't that cute? Love it. And our last one. <laughs> Pat, I knew this, you know, this is this one is I can just see you doing beautiful things with it. <laughs> and I really like the smaller size with just the waterfalls. Hey, and since we don't have, you know, a saying to go, I just used all the houses. And anybody on your gift list is going to be excited to get this. Or maybe a new baby's coming, or a wedding, or a new, you know, somebody with a new house. See, I was going to use home again for, for somebody that does have a new house. And then I'm like, ah, I better get the neighbors done first. And so, you can go back, like I said, and do... Maddie, but really you don't have to just for pictures and then it just closes up like so I get the bottom so again there's my front I decided this is going the opening is going to be to my right in the back Oops. Your, your lid's going to be tight. And this is where some of the comments were coming up. Now take your cookie or your candies and put it inside here. Or smaller hand motions. You can do a lot of things. Put some gifts in there. Put the lid on. guys together till I get it there and it's tight but like I said you want it to be tight and then I'll go in and, and choose a cut apart like I mentioned I won't do it on TV on TV here but I want to show you some of the really cute cut aparts in this line so oh that one's perfect um, warm winter wishes and I'll cut it down to fit um, you could fussy cut that little guy out anything so what I'm going to do I also have some of those I have some of these and they're small so maybe I'll put some on there and then I'll get one of the deer the Tim Holt deer that we have in put it on here because it definitely you can't put flowers here I was able to put flowers that was from our craftology kit because I we like to teach you clear from I want to teach you how to build these things and this is the new Valentine paper from Authentique oh and this little thing just mount it score it and put it down one of your cut aparts this is from the 8x8 collection and that's it guys that is your album in a box and I hope you enjoy this. Remember, next Thursday, and I'll remind you again next Thursday, I'll be live. And I'm also live on Facebook. It's at um, Authentic Paper. 
And if you are on Facebook, join us on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. And then next week we'll do another tutorial. I don't know what yet. And then I'm taking the two weeks off for the holidays because we're doing a New Year's Eve crop on Facebook under Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. And if you have nothing to do that night, join us. Designers will be doing tutorials. Um, we're going to do challenges, prizes, giveaway. And be sure also to show us your boxes. I want to see your finished boxes. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining me so much. And don't forget to click on subscribe or also um, hit, there's a little bell once you subscribe so that you'll get notified that I'm live. So here, oh, you want to, okay, let me show you really quick the three different boxes. So we have Valentine's, Valentine's, Snow Day, and there's actually another Christmas one I show. So there's your different boxes. Aren't they cute? So much fun. Okay, yes, I'm going to go eat dinner, and I think I'm hitting the bed tonight. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Oh, i got to move my microphone to see.